So today is January 6th, 2021. And today we're gonna to go over some note-taking strategies and we're going to continue to get acquainted with the course that you all will be taking in this semester. First, before we jump into things, I do wanna mention that last night, history was made. So some of you may have some family members in Georgia or maybe you even lived in Georgia for a portion of your life. Um, but there was a special election that took place in the state of Georgia last night and the first black senator from that state was elected. Uh, we're still waiting to hear the results of another race, another senatorial race that took place in that state. Uh, but this was a big deal, not only because it's a first, but also because it positions uh, the Democratic Party to gain a little bit more power uh, in the Senate. And so uh, there are some cool policies that are going to come out of a Democratic Senate. So it's a pretty big deal. And I just wanted you all to be aware of that. I also wanted to talk about briefly um, uh, the first black woman to be hired to coach a professional baseball team. So uh, that's a big deal. Her name is Bianca Smith. She was hired by the Boston Red Sox of uh, Major League Baseball. Uh, I'm a big baseball fan, so you all might hear me refer to the sport as we go. I, I also am a fan of sports in general, so we can kind of connect on that if you are a sports fan. But the reason I bring this up, even if you're not into politics, you're not into sports, I think that there are there is a good lesson to take from both of these stories. Both of these people in the year 2021 are the first to do something. Um, and what that means to me is that there's still a lot of history to be made, but also they haven't, they didn't just wake up and get put into the positions that they're in. It took a lot of trial and error. It took a lot of perseverance and it took a lot of community to get them where they are. They had to rely on other people. Raphael Warnock uh, was elected by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, I haven't looked at the uh, vote totals yet, in the state of Georgia. And he was able to do that because he was a long time component within that community. He was able to go around not only the city of Atlanta, uh, not only Fulton County, but also the state of Georgia and make a name for himself and contribute to communities. Same thing with Bianca Smith. She was moving from school to school, started off as an intern then moved into the baseball operations and became a coach. So she's moving from place to place, working hard, establishing a name for herself. And eventually, now they've both established themselves as the first to do something. So the lesson for you all as students, even if you're not interested in these things, is that hard work does pay off. Even if you don't necessarily see a path towards success right away, if you just work hard and you just get the ball rolling, it's eventually going to play out, okay? Um, what, I, what I learned last semester in, in our our trial with virtual learning was that so many students left things until the last minute. So many of my students were working really hard for those last two weeks, but for some of them, it still didn't. It still didn't pay out because they hadn't been working hard for the first uh, for the first however many 18 weeks of the semester. Okay, so start the ball rolling now. Even if you're not able to give 100% for whatever reason, maybe you're still wishing it was winter break. Maybe you're dealing with some type of uh, mental or physical distress, whatever it is. If you can't give 100%, give me 80. And then next week, we'll push it up to 85. And then eventually, we'll get to 100%, okay? But a little bit of hard work goes a long way. And I think these two people are a testament to that. So I wanted to share that with you all. I do like to share some current events with my students, and we can discuss, and you can share your opinions. Um, and, and sometimes they will be related to biology, but sometimes they will just be uh, some cool things that I think you all should be aware of. That being said, we will always have a warm up, and that that habit that that practice starts today. So I want you all to go ahead and navigate to Canvas. Hopefully, you all are already in our Canvas page, but navigate to Canvas, click on Modules, and then once you get into our Unit Zero module, please do complete the Unit Zero Day Two warm up. Today, I'm giving you sorry. Today I'm gonna to give you eight minutes to complete the warm up. Typically it will just be six. Um, and typically we would have already done it by now. You know, it was, the timer will start as soon as 1020, 1021 hits. So um, we're a little bit behind today, but that's okay.
Good question, Kathy. So the warm-ups are graded. Uh, they're not graded for accuracy. I can talk more about that when the timer is, is up. So in a couple of minutes, I'll say more about that. Good question, though. So to answer the question, now that the timer's up, hopefully that was ample time to complete that, that short warm-up. Your warm-ups and your exit tickets will be going into the gradebook in PowerSchool. However, they will not appear as individual assignments. I'm going to update PowerSchool at some point today so you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. But every unit, there will be one assignment called Unit 0, Warm-ups and Exit Tickets, or Unit 1, Warm-ups and Exit Tickets, so on and so forth. And all of the warm-ups and all of the exit tickets will be counted in that one assignment. Uh, each warm-up and each exit ticket is worth two points. Two points if you do it. I'm not, I'm not grading based on completion. The cool thing about the warm-ups and exit tickets is that they are good study tools. The questions that we ask in these warm-ups and exit tickets are very similar to the questions that you all will be asked on your tests. So you should take them seriously. We will be going over them. Uh, in class, once we start the actual content, we'll be going over at least one a day, um, and they will give you a good idea of what the questions will look like on the actual exams. You can also go back and redo them as another study mechanism. So let's say the day before the test, you've done all of your assignments, but you're looking to get a little bit more practice uh, just to ensure that you're, you're in a good place to take the exam. You can go back and redo the warm-ups and exit tickets uh, just to get a good idea of what, what will be asked on the exam. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> that was a great question, Kathy. I'm glad you brought that up. And if there are any more questions, please let me know. Okay, so every day we also will have the habit of having an objective as well as an essential question. Um, so would anybody like to just read this objective? The, the acronym SWBAT stands for Students Will Be Able To. Uh, students will be able to use the to create and save their first assignment within their own biology folder. Thanks, Abraham. I appreciate it. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about creating a biology folder in your own Google Drive. Uh, this is going to be a good place for you all to save assignments as the semester goes on, as well as to save your notes and anything else that you want to have access to as it relates to biology. What I also learned last semester, which was a huge difference between students who got A's and B's in the class and students who performed uh, under that, is that the students who got A's and B's were extremely well organized. At the end of the semester, I could go back in and see in their Google folders 
all of the notes that they had taken, if they were choosing to take virtual notes. I could also see all of the assignments. Um, and that way they weren't losing things. And it also gave me easier access to those assignments when I was going in and grading. Okay, so uh, and then the people who did not perform as well had empty Google folders and some of them had never even created a Google folder. So keep in mind, this will be probably your first grade in the grade book. So I do wanna make sure you all get this done today. But one thing that I, that I do expect some of you will uh, have in your Google folders will be notes. <clears throat> so note taking is obviously an extremely important aspect of this class. Uh, it's important not only that you stay organized academically, but it also allows you to stay organized personally. So I'm gonna get in the habit of making sure I tell you exactly what you should be writing down. You should include the date, you should include the lessons title, um, and this will give you an, an ability to go back and make sure that you've written down everything that you need to. And if you miss something, then you can go look at the YouTube video and make sure you recover it. And when you're preparing and studying for the test, you can make sure that you're looking at your notes and, and you're getting all the information that you need. So note taking is at the foundation of any successful academic student okay, or academic pursuit. It's something that we really, really have to prioritize in the science department specifically. I know that you all are probably taking notes in your English classes and in your social studies classes and in your math classes, but in the science department, it's so important uh, that we're taking strong notes because we have to process all these different types of information. We're gonna have diagrams that you need to copy down. We're gonna be introducing new vocabulary words that you've never seen before in any of your other classes. We're going to have some writing exercises uh, that get you all in the habit of thinking through and processing information uh, in a more synthetic way, okay? So you're going to have to practice all of those different note-taking strategies and have access to them as the semester goes on. I don't plan on checking notes and I, I don't really have a preference in terms of choosing to write it down on pen and paper or choosing to type it out virtually uh, or digitally but it's just what feels comfortable to you. And that's what leads me to this third bullet point. You need to choose the method that's going to be the most effective and efficient method for you. So those two words are important and they, they look alike, but they do mean two different things. An effective note taker is someone who's able to pull out all of the most important information from the lesson or from the lecture. You don't wanna have everything word for word written down. Uh, number one, that's going to take too long. And number two, not everything is important enough to deserve to be written down. Uh, you need to also be efficient, which means that as we go, I'm going to have certain words and certain phrases highlighted to tell you, okay, write this down for sure. Everything else you probably can just let go. But an efficient note taker is someone who's able to get things done quickly so that they have, they can spend more time processing information rather than simply copying things down. So I want you all to practice being both effective and efficient note takers. That being said, there are really four different note taking strategies or note, note taking methods that I think you might consider as we begin this semester. The first is the outlining method. So this is probably something you're all familiar with. Uh, the outlining method is really good for taking notes during lectures and live presentations because you just write as you go. And as the, as the lecture proceeds, you just continue to add on uh, to the notes that you've already taken. The outlining method asks that you have some type of heading, some type of title to introduce your notes. Then you have main topics. And under those main topics, you have some subtopics. Uh, and so you keep making these bullet points and you increase the indent as you go. Okay, so uh, this is a good one to practice. It's probably one that you're familiar with. This is good for people who are already pretty organized in their thoughts. Okay, so for some of you who might still be a little confused about the concepts that we're going over, this may not be the best method for you. This might be a method that you try out after you've, you've gone through the lecture. Maybe you're rewatching our lecture for the day. Um, and this is not so good for taking notes during reading because uh, it might throw off your focus and you wanna have some way of synthesizing your thoughts as you go through the reading that you're doing. I like the outlining method. This is typically how I took notes in high school and in college, um, but there are some others that I think work pretty well also. 
including the Cornell method. So some of you might be in AVID programs at, uh, at West Mech. Um, this is the method, the note-taking method that is championed by the AVID program. It's really good for summarizing, analyzing, and processing your notes. So this is really what's better for textual readings. You can write down the main idea in the left margin. You can ask questions of yourself that you can return back to and answer. And then you summarize the notes that you've taken. Okay, so uh, I like the Cornell method because it, it really asks you to be engaged in the note taking process. Again, rather than just copying things down, you've now got to find questions that you have to ask yourself and then you try to come back and answer them. And then you summarize your notes also. So this is a really effective way some of you might be a little more artistic and you might be a, a more abstract thinker. The mind map method is a great way for you to synthesize your thoughts. This is also good for textual readings as well as you begin to draw some connections between ideas, but it's not so good for lectures because you don't really know what to expect. You don't know what's coming next in the lecture. So uh, it's not always easy to summarize your thoughts in a, in a, in a live lecture. <clears throat> This might be good for creating a, a, a study guide or a unit summary. You can go back and say, now that I've learned everything that's, that has been presented in this unit, now that I know everything that I need to know about uh, genetics, I can try to connect all of the ideas. I can have some offshooting ideas. Um, I can have a big key idea in the middle. So this is good for uh, those, those summative or those, those summary activities. And then Lastly, the charting method. Um, so Dr. Potts, who is our assistant principal at West Mech, many of you I'm sure know him, uh, also uses this charting method. Uh, the charting method just basically allows you to set up uh, the, this kind of matrix. You've got rows and columns. Um, so it allows you to process information from various sources. This really requires that you have strong organizational skills, uh, and, but you also like things to be in a simple format. Okay, so uh, again, Note taking is really personal. It should be something that you do that you feel comfortable doing um, that's going to allow you to be an effective and efficient note taker. It's not really up to me to tell you you need to take notes this way. Uh, the only thing I will tell you is that you do need to take notes of some kind. You should have something that you can refer back to later on. That's really, really important. Uh, another thing I noticed with some of the students who didn't perform so well last semester was that when I would call on them to answer questions, uh, even if we had just gone over it yesterday, they couldn't tell me. And the reason for that, I'm not sure if they, you know, were watching YouTube videos about baking cakes or if they had stepped away from their Chromebook. Um, ultimately, I, I, I don't know because I cannot see you all right now, but you need to have some notes that you can refer back to. And those notes are going to help you with your assignments as you go. They're going to help you in these live lectures and they will help you as you study for our exams and for the EOC. Okay, so you all need, need, need to be taking notes. I don't care how you do it, but you've got to do it. All right, so we've made good time now. This is basically how we, how the day will function. Typically we will, of course, like I said, when you all come in, the timer will already be going to start your warm up. You'll have six minutes to do that warm up. Then we'll spend about, uh, 35, 34 minutes lecturing. Then we'll have 35 minutes starting at about 11 o'clock every day uh, to do the exit ticket and the asynchronous assignment. Today, of course, you do have an exit ticket and you also have two asynchronous assignments. There's one that's called U0D2, create your Google folder, and then U0D2, design your own virtual locker. So we're gonna walk through that today uh, and I'm gonna ask one of your classmates to volunteer themselves, to share their screen, kind of walk through how to do this. The virtual locker will end up looking essentially like this, and I'll explain that later on, but first I want to go through this Google folder. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to ask someone to volunteer and share their screen, it could be anybody.
anybody, anybody, someone share their screen. I'll walk you through the whole thing. It won't be difficult at all. I'll do it. Thank you, Brianna. Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually, before we go to this screen, let's go back into Canvas so we can show where the assignment is. So Brianna is in Canvas. She's going to go to Modules. Good. And then we, we open up this unit zero module. We can see that it says U0 D2, create your Google folder. She'll click on that. Now there is a video there that I've recorded of myself explaining exactly how to do this. So uh, if you're still confused after we go through it here, that video should help you. Um, but all she needs to do is just follow the directions that are explained in that video and then uh, she can share the Google folder with me and she'll get credit for it. So let's go back to your drive, Brianna. Yeah. Okay. So she's going to click on the new button in the top left and then folder. And what I'm asking you all to name it is your first name, your last name, and then biology folder. What did you say, name it what? Yep, you're right so far. So Brianna Williams biology folder. Can I just name it bio folder? That's fine, yep. Good, and then she'll create it. And then she'll, yeah, you can go into it. And then in the where, do you see the arrow next to Brianna Williams' bio folder? Yes. Yeah, there, drop down, click on that. And then it says share. So this is how you actually submit it and, and get credit for creating this folder. So you'll share it with me. Um, you can type in Gregory, G-R-E, G-O-R, yep. Keep going, Gregory, R and then put two Y's, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y-Y. -Y. Yep. And now she's done. Okay, so this is where she'll save the other assignment that we're doing today. So yeah, you can stop sharing. Thank you, Brianna. Uh -huh. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and I hopefully we'll start to get a lot more emails of folks sharing their folders with me. I know that I've already gotten one from Chandler, and Chandler has also already done the other assignment. Abraham, I just got yours, so I appreciate it. Um, now, the other assignment is called the Create Your Virtual Locker. This is a creative assignment. I just want to give you all the space to kind of share some things that you are interested in and things that you like. It could be a favorite food. It could be... Uh, your favorite TV show. The directions are there. You can see my virtual locker as well. Um, but you'll just make a copy. And then, of course, you'll save your virtual locker to your Google folder. And that's how you'll receive credit for it. Okay, so uh, once you place your virtual locker into your biology folder, then it'll essentially be turned in and I'll have access to it. Okay, so I'm going to be here on mute now, and this is what we'll do every day. We'll spend the second half of class asynchronously. I will still be here on mute um, and, and available to answer any questions you have, but you all should spend this time doing those, those three assignments, the exit ticket, the virtual locker, and the Google folder.
So for the folder, we put our name, last name, biology, and what was the last part? Folder, just, yeah, your okay. first name, your last name, and then bio or biology folder.
Okay, folks, it is now 1135. So you all are good to go ahead and enjoy your 30 minute lunch break. I appreciate everybody being here today. If you need any help with any of the assignments, please don't hesitate to let me know. And I will talk to you all tomorrow.